All right, so in this video, we're going to look at another example of band ratios. And specifically, we're going to look at the normalized uh, burn ratio, or NBR. And then we're going to look at the change in that ratio to try to detect or visualize the extent of a force fire, and also just like the in intensity or severity of the fire. Okay, so the data we're going to be working with is some Landsat data. Um, and this is in the southern part of uh, the Black Hills of South Dakota. So this is one full Landsat scene. Note that this has already been converted to surface reflectance um, because this band ratio is supposed to be calculated from surface reflectance as opposed to raw like DN values. Okay, and then also we've got some low values around the edges which is kind of screwing up the display. Okay, so let's do some pre-processing first. So what I'm going to do is uh, generate a mask because we don't really want to run this for like the full extent. So I'm, I already have a South Dakota database here, so we're going to call this, um, I don't know, call it burn study. And we'll change that to a polygon layer. And then hit OK. So now we should be able to draw. So let's pull a subset of the area. I'll maybe use this rectangle tool. Okay. And I think I'd like to move that over a little. So I'm going to grab it and then grab the move tool here. And we'll move it over to there. And we'll do a save. Okay. So that's our extent. So now we want to actually extract out the, the multiband data at the at, relative to that extent. So I'm going to go into raster, extraction, and then we'll do ras, uh, clip raster to mask layer. So we'll do, uh, it doesn't really matter, we'll do our pre one first relative to the study area and we'll note, we'll call that We'll call this, uh, uh, let's see here, fire pre dot tiff and run. Okay, so now we have a subset of that um, image. And uh, then we'll do the same thing for the post. So we'll go in here to raster again, extract, extract by mask. And now we want to do the post and extract that out. Again, we'll call this one fire post.tiff. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn off the originals so we don't get confused here. Okay, so here we go. This is our data. I'm going to change the display real quick. So we're going to do. Uh, We'll do a uh, standard, well, let's just do like a, um, and we'll do the shortwave one. So if, uh, we'll do six, four, and then um, two. Okay, so this is a common composite people use for, for Landsat data. So the red is showing the shortwave the green is showing red and the blue is showing green. So this is the post fire image and as you can see here is a pretty obvious burn scar. Um, and then to compare that to the pre fire we'll have to go in and change the symbology there also. So we'll do again six, um, four, and, and two. And then if we turn this off, this one off, we can see that's what it looked like pre-fire. And then this is what it looks like post-fire. So it's a pretty obvious burn scar. So now we'd actually like to generate a ratio that, that shows that. Um, so we're going to use, uh, there's two shortwave bands with Landsat. So we're going to use 
uh, band seven, which in this stack is six because we didn't include the six band, which, which is thermal, and then the near infrared, which is band four. So the ratio that we're going to use is basically the near infrared minus the short wave infrared divided by the sum. So as you can see with this composite, there's a, a lot more, relative, relatively speaking, there's more short wave infrared reflectance over the burn site than there is near infrared reflectance um, in comparison to the pre-fire. So that's why we're looking at this. The post-fire look has more of like a bare soil type signature, whereas the pre-fire obviously has like a forest vegetation signature. Okay, so we're going to do this again with raster with the raster calculator. So we go up here to raster, raster calculator, and there's all of our bands. There's a lot of stuff listed because we have you know four layers loaded in within. They're all multi-band. So I'm just going to produce this skeletal structure first. So we're going to have a numerator and a denominator, and that's going to be our um, that's going to be our pre-fire data. So we'll wrap that, and then we're going to do a subtract, and then the post-fire, and it's going to have the same structure. So we'll just copy this. Okay, so let's uh, start adding bands. So again, we want to start off with our pre-fire. So we want to do six. Well, let me put the cursor in the right place here. So um, we'll actually start. We want to do the near infrared. So we're going to do four. And we're going to subtract from that the short wave. And then the sum in the denominator. So um, I'm just going to copy that over and plug in or swap out the, the operator there. And then the back end, we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be for the post fire. So we could recreate this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll just delete all this, and I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to um, just swap out the, uh, the pre with post. So I'm just swapping those out. Generally find with the with the when you're generating syntax, the best thing to do is try to avoid as much manual typing as you can, because then you're less likely to make a mistake, right? So before we run it, let's make sure it makes sense. So we have our near infrared minus our shortwave infrared divided by the sum, and that's for the pre-fire data. And then from that, we're going to subtract the near infrared minus the short wave divided by the sum and all for the post uh, post fire data. It says the expression is valid down here. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. It just means that there's no syntax error. Um, so now we'll save it. We'll call this um, D for difference in BR. And... Uh, we call bh for black hills dot tiff save okay so that looks good just in case there's an error um, I'm just gonna copy this so that way if it doesn't run correctly I can paste it back in and fix it as opposed to starting from scratch um, hopefully we won't have to do that but that's a good rule of thumb okay so hit okay and now it'll do his calculation and dumped it in there. Oh, it's underneath. Here we go. All right, so here is our output. So the high values on the ratio indicate that there's a you know, likelihood of a burn and that the burn severity is probably pretty bad. So obviously that highlights this burn pretty obvious. Um, so that seems to actually be, you know, a pretty good ju judgment or proxy for for burn occurrence and burn severity so these techniques are actually used like operationally by like the u.s forest service and they specifically use things like landsat data but you could do this type of work with any sensor that gives you short wave and near infrared radiation data so things like sentinel 2 or like worldview 3 data for higher res um so anyway it's it's actually 
operationalized and, pr- and pretty effective for looking at, at the impact and severity of burns. I guess just to finish, we'll do a quick uh, symbology change. So I'm going to go in here, change this to single band pseudo collar, and since we're looking at fire, uh, let's look at all ramps. Maybe we'll do like a yellow to red ramp. There we go, and then we have the burn area highlighted there and the deeper reds. <laughs> 